Hello, brothers and sisters. I'm Pastor Stephen Jurdy at Zion Lutheran Church in Wausau and Bethany Lutheran Church in Anawa, here to share with you a word at the middle of the week. We have been making our way around the sanctuary of Zion in Wausau, looking at the paintings of the suffering of Christ that are hanging on its pillars and talking about what each of those paintings reminds us concerning all that our Lord suffered. This week, our very first painting, which is right behind me, is the painting of Christ greeting his mother as he carries his cross. And so I'm going to lift up the phone, and there you can see it. There is this painting of Christ embracing his mother, Mary wearing the traditional color blue that Mary tends to wear in church art. And if you look at the face of Christ and the face of Mary, while his face, while his face in particular might look a little what do I want to say, a little worn from all that he has suffered, the closer we get to that face, the more we can see that he is looking very tenderly down at his mother and she is embracing him tenderly as well, as if to say to us or to remind us that Christ, even in the midst of his sufferings, was capable of great tender and love, not only towards Mary, but of course, towards the whole world, and ultimately towards the church who would believe in him. Now I'm going to walk along here to our next painting, and actually in order to, well, actually I'm going to go back this way. In order to appreciate the next painting the most, I want us to take a little peek at the painting we looked at last week. It is, this is a painting of Christ falling under the weight of the cross, and if you look at this painting, you'll see that the light shining on Christ comes from in front of him. A stark light shining on him, casting a shadow behind him as he has fallen, as if to say Christ is being led forward by the light of God in his path. But you may recall that when Christ suffered upon the cross, one of his great sufferings was that he was abandoned by the Father. He cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And so now as we come to this next painting, which also depicts Christ as having fallen beneath the weight of his cross, you'll see that the light of this painting shines behind Christ, as though now he is passing into a darker phase of his sufferings. He is passing from a time of being led by the light and being led into the light towards this time of abandonment or forsakenness on his cross. The light is behind him, shining again on him and casting shadows forward. And so the shadows are beginning to deepen ahead of Christ. His suffering is on its way, suffering that was born for our sake. That forsakenness of Jesus, in which he cries out to his Father, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? is a very important aspect of his sufferings. We often, in our remembrance of the cross, will focus on the physical sufferings of Christ, how his hands were pierced, his side had a spear thrown through it, how he was beaten, and this, this crown of thorns was pressed down upon his forehead. Surely those were immense sufferings that none of us want to experience and that would have been excruciating for Jesus but the deeper sufferings were these sufferings of the soul, as Martin Luther will often point out. The sufferings of soul that he experienced as he was rejected by his countrymen, as he was forsaken by his disciples, and ultimately forsaken by his Heavenly Father. And I may have spoken about that a little bit last week, but it's really those sufferings that we want to meditate on because it is in that suffering that Jesus shows his great love for us, that he goes where we should go. We should be abandoned by the Father for our sin, and yet Jesus enters into that forsakenness on our behalf. He suffers the punishment of sin, and then rises to declare its forgiveness. And so truly we have a very merciful Lord, and all of these paintings of Christ that uh, we've been so blessed with here at Zion, and in different ways throughout the church, because all churches have different ways of depicting the sufferings of Christ, usually in their, in their church sanctuaries. 
remind us of those sufferings and comfort us with its message, even though we stand there in awe as we contemplate the pain and the interior sufferings that Christ bore. God's peace be with you as you meditate upon his sufferings this Lent. May he strengthen you on the path as you make our way to Holy Week, and may the sufferings of Christ give you cause to pause, to consider how much God loves you, that he should give up his own Son, that all who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. God's peace be with you.